because I thought Howie made a uh, very nice move, but I don't think he quite acquired uh, Brian Dawkins. And Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Jody. I'm like, this was universally lauded. And I'm like, I like the deal, too. I right. you know, They got younger. They got more athletic. I think, long, you know, long term for this season, I'm not talking, yeah, obviously, this is the last year of this rookie deal. Um, I think it's an upgrade. But boy, we got a week to go to the to the start of the regular season. And a good practice squad Wednesday, everybody. Oh, John McMullen thinks he's done working. No, 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 no. no he got no. more work to do today. No. The Eagles yeah. will be adding after subtracting yesterday. And we're here to cover it all for you for the next two hours on the Jacob Media YouTube channel. Thank you much for punching up Birds 365. Now, I'm going to ask a favor right here at the top for those of you who are watching right now. For all of you who liked, and I use that word specifically, uh, Howie Roseman's acquisition yesterday of uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson, hit that like button for the Mac and Mac guys here on Birds 365 right now. That means we'll do well today. If all of you who like what Howie Roseman did yesterday, like us, we'll be okay. Because I thought Howie made a uh, very nice move, but I don't think he quite acquired uh, Brian Dawkins. And Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Jody. I'm like, this was universally lauded. And I'm like, I like the deal, too. I, right. you know, they got younger. They got more athletic. I think, you know, Long term for this season, I'm not talking. Yeah, obviously, this is the last year of his rookie deal. Um, I think it's an upgrade, but boy, we got a week to go to the to the start of the regular season. This guy's played 80 snaps at safety, and people are making him out to be Malcolm Jenkins. Well, Malcolm moved from corner to, and he came from New Orleans. This ain't Malcolm Jenkins. Um, yeah, you know, I like the deal. Same but- here. There's, you know, you and I talked about Jaquaski Tart a lot. And when we saw the contract and, and I, I think we both said, look, nobody knows him better than San Francisco and they didn't want him. Right. And that tells you something. Right. When, when they move on from him and he signs a barely above the minimum contract here, it wasn't like they made a major effort to keep Jaquaski there. They had yeah. moved on. They were going in another direction uh, well, we give him a chance here in Philadelphia. He's the best safety we have on the right. No, he wasn't. At no point was he ever the best safety. Uh, the no, at no point he was ever close. But I only bring that up because to a lesser degree, obviously, you know, they only gave up a, a 2023 fifth and a 2024 sixth. This ain't, this ain't Ronnie Lott, you know? I, I, I mean... And 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 I wonder the the Anthony Harris part of it, which I get because I said that dating back to Tart as well. I said I could see Harris and Tart making this team and both getting cut because if they're not starters, they're not going to be here. Um, and and that's sort of how it developed. Although I start to think, are they playing that shell game that I mentioned with Tart? Are they going to try to bring Anthony Harris back after Week One? Um, and, and sort of let Chauncey, uh, Gardner Johnson have that launching pad, uh, to learn the defense, to learn a new position. Because <laughs> we got a guy who played seven years of safety on, on a, on a, on a really good defense and he couldn't pick up the defense in a month. And this guy's going to pick up the defense in a week and doesn't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I just think there's some curious parts to this as I sat back and I started to think about it. Can you start me, week one at safety? And, le- and we got a lot to, to get into, but this was the biggest move, so that's why we're focusing on it. And you might understand this better than me. I didn't play football as a youth. My father suggested I stick to basketball and baseball because I was a skinny kid. So you want to play football? You can play football. I had a big arm. I was a shortstop. I could throw the football. I could throw everything all over the place. But he talked me into not playing football. So I never did. I followed pretty closely. I've done shows with guys like you and former players in the NFL. And I think I understand the game pretty well. But maybe this is something I'm just lacking because I didn't play the game. The corner 
uh, the slot corner position is very close and equates to the safety position in the National Football League. Now, you keep telling us how everybody in the league is playing the Vic Fangio defense, and the Eagles are just one of many teams who do that. Is that the case across the board? Because the way they were talking to yesterday, Johnny Mac, slot corner safety, same thing, that they're interchangeable. No. no. I, I don't think of it that way. No. I think of them – there are similarities you know, in the two positions yeah. for sure, but they're not the same position, and they believe they're just going to move uh, Gardner from uh, the position he was playing to this new position. It's going to be the same thing. The yeah, same uh, uh, cover corner compared to the Eagles' free safety. Really, it's the same thing, Johnny Mac? It, it, this all stems from Jonathan Gannon, who, who said a couple of weeks ago, who said, Sometimes our slots and, and safeties mirror each other. Um, and then he put sometimes, essentially. Not not all the time, sometimes. And it's usually when they're playing quarters coverage and they're both in the slot. So it's more about the safety. You see him cross-training Josiah Scott and Andre Sachere over the summer as well, trying to create that type of player in a coverage aspect. But there's times you have to line up and play safety and just a pure safety that what you're thinking about, Jody. And that's what he hasn't done. And they start with this defense. They start – the whole goal of this defense is to start in too high and then spin off into whatever coverage you're playing right as they snap the football, which takes a lot of football intelligence, which is one of the reasons they're really high on Marcus Epps because he's a really smart guy. Um Natural safety, been playing safety for a long time, dating back to college. Now, Chauncey played safety in college as well, so he's got some, and he's done it a little bit at the pro level. But no, they're not they're not mirrored positions. Everybody forgot to put on the last word uh, that Jonathan Gannett said, which was essentially sometimes, in some ways, or some, I'm paraphrasing. Um, so... In the coverage aspect, when they're in the slot, that's what he's talking about, you know. So a safety has to be a slot more than the other way around because he's also told me we're not moving Avante Maddox from the slot um, because people keep talking about that. Right, Our boy Barrett said it last night at NBC Sports Philly that Maybe they'll move Avante Maddox to say because he played some safety and uh, keep Chauncey Gardner where his best drives position me is. nuts. I love my- Barrett. I love Barrett to death. It drives me nuts. I mean, Avante deserves a lot of credit. I'm going to look this up uh, as we're talking uh, for doing that as a, you know as a uh, young player uh, as as a rookie player. Playing in the at safety when I had a bunch of injury issues, and he fought and he clawed and he did everything he could. What he didn't do was play well. I I I don't he he you know Jim Swartz gave him tremendous credit because he had no other options that was outside of the box. He had never done it before. And he really, really, unlike, for instance, Andre Dillard, when he had to move to right tackle, he didn't just put up his hands and say, uh, he worked and he fought and he did everything humanly possible. But it wasn't pretty by any stretch of the imagination. He was playing out of position. He, he, by the way, I, so I was looking, here he is, 92 of 112 as a rookie, uh, pro football focus grades, uh, it wasn't great. Um, then he was forced, by the way, to play outside, which was even worse because he's, you know, he's too short. He can't play outside corner. Um, how we, I remember Howie Roseman that year bringing up Aaron Glenn. You know Aaron, ex-Jet, pro bowler, was 5'9", managed to overcome it, was a really good player in this league. Didn't work out. Didn't work out for Avante Maddox. Doesn't work out for most 5'9 corners. And then they finally get him in the slot. Finally get, which is what they drafted him to play originally. 
And they said, this guy's a slot corner. Even though he played outside at Pitt, you know, you can play outside in college at 5'9". But they drafted him to be a slot corner. Third year, they finally got him in there. They played well. They don't want to move him. They don't want to move him. If you got, if you have the pro football focus grades up, um, did, do they rank breakout cornerbacks into slot cornerbacks? Do they rank them in that way or just all cornerbacks? No, they don't. They don't. Uh, all right. But well, he, then he, that's he, okay. I'll make the point I want to make. My opinion, and again, I don't break down film of every single team every single week, so I don't know, but I know what I see when I do see it. I think he's one of the best slot cornerbacks in is. the NFL. I, I'm going to put him in the top third of the NFL, which is one of the top eight in the NFL. If you got a guy who's top eight in his position, is is Chauncey Gardner like number three? So you, you, if you're moving Avante Maddox from that position, you're doing so – because you're getting better at slot corner? Really? Is no. that the line of thinking? It just doesn't make any sense to me, John, why they would do that. No. Avante's a better slot than than CJ, and he was last year. Um, yeah, exactly. So why would you? Gardner's going to be a, a safety. It's going to be a transition. It's going to take some time, and they're not just going to snap their fingers, and he's going to fit right into the Eagle defense. I think he'll get better as the year goes on. But again, listening to some of the Eagle fans and even some uh, media across the board, it sounded to me like they had acquired Brian Dawkins. Yeah. Oh same my here. God! The, the, how he wrote went out and got the best safety on the planet. No, um, he got I, a better I, safety than what they had, but Jody. not the best safety on the planet. You know, we don't always agree. We we agree. I sat there when they made this deal. Uh, uh, you know, my immediate reaction was, "Wow, that's a that's a really good deal." Yep. And then I started thinking about it, and I I'm um, I'm starting to bring everything into it, and everybody's going overboard, like you said. You know, Brian Dawkins, they, he's about as close to. Malcolm Jenkins is Kayvon Wallace is the Brian Dawkins. All right. Just because Kayvon Wallace played at Kent Clemson doesn't make him Brian Dawkins. Just because Malcolm Jenkins went came from New Orleans doesn't make CJ Gardner Johnson uh, uh Malcolm Jenkins. I mean, I I I I don't understand people who go down that route. They got look, they got better from a youth standpoint, from an athletic athleticism standpoint from a trade standpoint i know they wanted more range at safety they value coverage more than run support that's why they're they're trying to go down this route maybe it works i i hope it works but yeah i think there's going to be i you know there's going to be some hiccups 80 snaps as a safety in his nfl career entering his fourth year 80 reps as a net, as a real safety. And the other thing, and uh, I know we got a lot to get in here. Um, loved Howie yesterday, the attempt at humor again, just uh, he makes me laugh with his inability to be funny. I oh laugh, my God. I kind of laugh and at he him won't more stop. than I, and he I laugh with stop. him. But he he, he is, loves to crack jokes at these and, things. And, and they usually falls flat on his face. Uh, but one of the things you thought, I went in mentioning the deal. Oh, and he comes from the right university, Florida, which is Howie's university. The Eagles passed on him three or four times three years ago when he was available. It was a fourth round pick, right? And yeah, I don't remember if the pick. Saints or the Eagles picked first in that round. But it wasn't like Howie was in love with the kid coming out of the right university when he uh, entered the draft early. It's not a good sign when you enter the draft early and you don't go to the fourth round. Um, but they had their crack at this guy. Now, he improved you, you, way much more on it, what he did in the NFL than he would he did at Florida. But I thought it was kind of funny that he emphasized Florida. Howie, if you loved him because he came out of Florida, why didn't you take him three years ago? But uh, again, not, 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 uh, we got a lot to cover and uh, this is only part of it. One quick question Jimmy Kemsky is going to join us coming up less than five minutes. And he was the victorious. Eagles 53 man roster contest winner. Did he have Josh Sills? No, nobody had Josh. Nobody Sills. had Josh. Nobody. Sills. All right, good. nobody. So nobody I can get on your Josh case because I'm really getting on everybody else's case for all you guys who were down there every single day and got a chance to see him. 
it, nobody saw this coming. Did no. they keep it under wraps? Was it no, that well, he was a it's... film warrior? How does he make the team over a guy like Anderson, who had already been here, done that, proven himself in games for the National Football League? It wasn't like he was the only non-drafted free agent because everybody's got to have one. They already have like a gyp. They already had Joe. They didn't have to go there with those. Where did this come out of? Uh, Jeff Stoutman. Uh, Jeff has tremendous, tremendous power in that organization. And if he wants somebody, um, they're going to defer to him. Um, and he wanted him. You know, I think it all stems in hindsight. And hopefully I get to talk to Stout about this soon. But uh, I think it all stems from the concussions that Jordan Mailata and Andre Dillard had at the same time. And I just talked about um, Avante Maddox's willingness to to move to free safety, even though he never did it before. Uh, they needed a, a left tackle just to get through practice, and they moved Sills out there. And it wasn't great by any stretch of the imagination, but again, he's out there fighting, he's clawing, he's trying hard. He did better than expected. Um, and I think you know, he values that. So he's got inside, you know, outside versatility a little bit. Um, and he just likes him and he thinks he's got uh, long-term potential. And they're going to defer to Jeff Stoutland when it comes to offensive linemen. So if he says Sills has got a bigger upside than Anderson, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to go with Jeff Stoutland. But nobody saw it coming. Nobody. That, that kind of surprised me. I didn't see it coming. I had him behind Coyote Awasika as well. So when I had Anderson as my 10th. Awasika would be my 11th. And uh, Stills would have been my 12th. Um, he likes him. He likes him. And, you know, when, when you, he's the 10th offensive lineman. So obviously he's a developmental guy. You're not going to get down to him to play. Um, and he deserves deference, man. If any assistant coach deserves it, he does. That's true. So, um, I would err and you know, he can always go to Alabama whenever the hell he wants. So, you know, he's got a lot of power. I used to joke when Jason Peters was here, the flow chart was Jeffrey Laurie, Jason Peters, Howie Roseman, and then on down. Now the flow chart might be Jeffrey Laurie. Julian Laurie, Jeff Stoutland, and it flows on down. <laughs> Stoutland yeah. does have that kind of uh, power in the organization, and he's earned it. He deserves it. Uh, he just did a real nice job of hiding it from everybody because nobody knew that uh, Mr. Sills was in the, the apple of the eye of the Eagles offensive line coach. I eat John McMahon. I'm Jerry McDonald. We still got plenty to get into. The Eagles cut to 53. There'll be additions back today. Guys added to the practice squad. Uh, There weren't all that many surprising cuts. There were no guys that just... Well, Anthony Harris was the biggest surprise. You knew that came, and then like five minutes later, the news of the trade broke. So you knew something was up. Um, But obviously, you know, Jimmy got 51 and won. There were, I got 50. There were about four or five of us that got 50. Um, my big swing was Tart, which I, which was a terrible mistake. Uh, you know, I thought the other safeties were so bad. I thought, well, maybe they're just lean on the veteran presence. And that was a terrible, terrible mistake. Um, and I'm trying to what which other one did I mean? Oh, Reed Blankenship, I didn't get. I thought I thought Reed would, I thought they would default to getting Reed on the practice, practice squad. squad. Um, and and you know, he, but he played well, so I I'm not stunned that Reed Blankenship made the team, but uh, I didn't pick him. We will get to and the guy the who, champ, the champs in the green room, the champs there in the is. house, <laughs> and we will punch him up next. Uh, Jimmy Kepsky from PhillyVoice.com going to jump on with Mac and Mac on Birds 365.